All right, hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at product photography. I'm going to be teaching a class here in September. I teach at a normal um, school, like during the uh, school year. And one of the things that I have students do is portfolio. So today I'm going to be showing you how to take pictures of things for your portfolio. Now I'm going to be using jewelry as a representation of the thing. In other words, that ring just represents anything. It can represent, you know, a stack of business cards, it can uh, do a laser engraved something, it can be any product, anything. The ring only represents the product I need to take a picture of, but the steps are all the same. In our lab we use Nikons, so this is a uh, Nikon 7100. You can use any lens for this. I'm just using a uh, Nikon 105, but you can use any lens for this. I like using this lens for demonstration because it over exaggerates aperture. Okay. I'm also going to be over teaching this because I have students that have absolutely never touched a camera before. So the first thing we do is make sure it's on a tripod. Um, for the first few lessons, it's already on a tripod for you. The box is kind of like set there. Your, your duty is to just pay attention to what I'm doing button-wise. Okay. Cool. So, on button. Students love using cell phone mode. Okay, in product photography, it's not a bad idea actually because you can use the zoom in, zoom out feature. So LV, make sure this is on camera. Hit LV. Okay. Now for for this mode, what I want to use is timed because I can't touch the camera while it's taking a picture of the product. It will jostle the camera and then it will cause details to be lost because of that. So in order to do this, I put it on timed mode. In order to do that, I just press down this button on the corner of the camera and then rotate this little dial and I can rotate it over to time with one hand. There we go. <laughs> Next, I want to change it over to manual. I do that by clicking the center button and then rotating it. Good. Okay, so this is your this button right here brings up information so just make sure you're pressing down on it and it should have this if this doesn't pop up this little exposure bar hit the eye and hit down until it pops up good So for, for product photography, especially product photography, we make sure our ISO is very low. We want it to be as low as we can get. So 100 ISO is what we can get on this camera. In order to change it, you just hold down ISO and you rotate this dial. You can see by holding this button, which is that button right there, and rotating the dial, we can change the ISO. The higher the ISO, the more noise you get. So we want to eliminate noise. To aim this camera, and this camera is just like the ones we have in the lab, we have this handle, 
okay, and it has a trigger. So we squeeze the trigger, and when you squeeze the trigger, you can then move the camera. Do not attempt to move the camera without squeezing the trigger, ever. It ruins the tripod. And if you see another student do it, please tell them to stop doing it. <laughs> All right, so I have aimed my camera at the ring, but know that I could just reach in there and move the ring too, and it's a lot faster that way. Sometimes when you're taking pictures of multiple things, don't keep moving the camera, move the product. Is that a good angle? No, I'll just move it over here, see? All right, notice that it's out of focus. So in order to focus it, make sure the camera is on autofocus. I'm gonna shut this off for a sec. Autofocus is located right here on the camera. So make sure that's on AF and make sure the lens is on MA. Okay, so what we do is lightly press this button. Just lightly press it. When we lightly press it, you can feel it engage. So take a second to, you know, just kind of play around with lightly pressing this button and you can feel the lens is doing something. Don't press it down all the way. And there we go. By lightly pressing, it's now focused on the product. And you can see I pressed it too hard and it took a picture. Okay, so up here, so the exposure is set to negative right now. That means if I take a picture, it's rather dark. Here's the picture I just took. Pretty dark, right? So we can preview the picture using this button. So what I wanna do is my aperture, an aperture works like this. If I have this ring and I'm looking at it, and if I want all the detail to be here, I would make that number really low. If I wanted to capture the entire ring and all the depth behind it, I make sure the number is rather high. So the aperture is opening up and allowing only some details to be shown. But we, when we squint our eyes, don't we see a lot more detail? Like, squint right now at something and you can see a lot more detail on something. So, the aperture inside the camera, the lower the number, the bigger the hole. And the bigger the hole, just the detail on the front of the ring is gonna be shown. If I have a larger number, all of the ring will be shown. And here's a demonstration of that. So right now I'm just gonna put this on. Something ridiculous. <laughs> so F40 is your aperture. So this will allow everything in the scene to be shown. The problem with having such a small aperture is not a lot of light gets in the camera. So your shutter speed is incredibly slow. And everything in focus is kind of boring. 
So here I'm going to hit play. And you can see that ring has detail here and detail all the way in the back of it. Okay, so let's switch that around. Let's go smaller aperture. So I'm changing the aperture using this rotating dial right here on the front of the camera. So I'll switch it to a really low number. Okay, anytime I switch aperture, you can see that the exposure bar goes back to something like positive. I want it always at zero. I'll get into shutter changing here in a second. So I'm going to change my shutter speed. Okay, now I'm going to take a picture of that ring. Okay, in the picture, you can see that this has detail, the front of the ring, but look at the background. It's very blurry. Yeah. So, Again, the smaller the hole, the more detail you get throughout the entire piece. So for product photography, in most cases, we use quite a large aperture, unless you're trying to illustrate a point or get artistic, okay? But in most cases, you don't wanna, you'll probably shoot it so you want the most amount of detail. So slightly higher slightly high on aperture. 40 is just insane. You could probably get away with, in most cases, like, and you know, a 20, 25. It depends on the lens and everything else. I'm showing you this so you can experiment. Okay? What looks good? That's what you have to ask yourself. Not my opinion, but what looks good to you. For me, I want the mid-range of detail, so I'm going to switch that over with that front dial to something like 20. Now that I locked my aperture, now I have to decide on shutter speed. Well, that's easy. I just rotate this dial in the front until I get to zero. Okay, so let's say it's in the positive. I'll have to rotate it to the right. If it's in the negative, I'll have to rotate it to the left. Again, play around until you get that. Last, make sure that this is on not locked. So we can now move our area of focus around in this case, I want to focus on this front part of the ring. I lightly press this button. And voila, everything's in focus. My exposure is at zero. And now I can take a picture by clicking the button really hard. It turns green there. See it? While it's taking the picture, do not touch the camera. Here's the whole action. So, look at, there's no lights on. It's just a white box. And you can kind of see how flat that looks. Okay, let me engage the lights. If I engage the lights, that throws everything off. But the only thing I need to adjust is this. Again, lightly pressing that button will engage sometimes this little bar right here. So if it's missing, 
disengage the button. So here I am back at zero. I had to change my shutter speed in order because the lights got turned on. Okay, so there's the one with the lights on. Let's hit play. And let's look at the one without the lights. You can see the difference. See how much more dynamic it looks. It's like there. Punchy. Very punchy. But I wanted to illustrate that you didn't need a whole lot of light to do that punch, right? All you need is a box and it needs to be white in an area that's pretty lit. Okay, so that is, that's as simple as it gets. Um, there's actually a little bit more stuff, but um, not needed right now. Right now, you need to go take some shots of random things in a white box with the lights on and make sure that all the detail is there throughout the entire piece. Okay? And there'll be a little bit of a, an assignment written out so you can get, you know, how many items, how many different angles, all that good stuff. But for right now, that's the lesson. So I hope you enjoyed.